Father, Son, and Spirit. Yahweh, Father, Son, and Spirit, in Jesus' almighty name. Yahweh, Father, Son, and Spirit. Hey, Prophet, pray in Jesus' name. I'm going to be calling that young Muslim kid named Mustafa. He says he's 15. That's what he said on David Wood's channel. His name is Mustafa. He's that young 15-year-old. So pray in Jesus' name that the Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified. The Lord Jesus bless this session and fill us with the Holy Spirit so I can glorify Jesus Christ and take this young man captive for the glory of Jesus. Have your way. We love you, Father. Son of God, Lord Jesus, be glorified. Holy Spirit, take over and <clears throat> destroy the blasphemies and use me to take this man captive for the glory of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Okay, guys, get ready. Hopefully it's not a waste of time. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Yellow. Hello. This year, hey. buddy. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Speak clearly. And no cursing like you did in David's comment section. Sorry, um, you're, you're a little bit quiet. Can you read the volume a, a little bit? What? Are you speaking English? You're a little bit quiet. No, my, my mic is good. Everyone can hear me fine. Oh, that's okay. Can you hear me now? Sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, well. Like, I can hear you, but only a little bit. Fix your microphone. It's on your end. Please don't waste our time. People are listening. We need to do this. You ready? Sure. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. You got your mic. It's clear. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Can you hear I'm him? Yeah. Can you, can hear, you hear this kid? Hold on. Be patient, man. Calm down. Can you hear him? Can you guys hear him? Speak a little bit. Yeah. Hello. Keep speaking. Check, check. Check, 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 check. Okay, check. good. They can hear you. You're right. Check, check. Okay. Now, what about Surah 4211? Go to Surah 4211. That's what you mentioned. Sorry, what? You mentioned Surah 4211 and Surah 112, verse 4. Right. What about them? Read them. Open up your Quran and read those passages. I didn't mention those. In the comment section, you told David Wood and I, do you want me to read your comment that you sent on Skype? Yeah. yeah. You Maybe. said that we would delete our channel if you proved X, Y, and Z, and you quoted these verses. Do I need to read the comment? Hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, you remember now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now you remember. Okay. Go to Surah 4211 and read that for me. I'll go to Surah 4211. Read that for me. Uh, he is creator of the heavens on the earth. Okay. He has made for you from yourselves mates and among the couple mates he multiplies you th thereby. There is nothing like unto him and he is the heir in the sink. Okay, so there's nothing like unto him comparable to him. Now go to Surah 112 verse 4. Read that for us. When Joseph said to his father, Surah 112, father, I have seen Surat al-Ikhlas, Surat al-Ikhlas, 112, not Surat al-Yusuf. Oh, yeah, not Surat al-Yusuf. Okay. okay, so 112, 4. Yeah, because you mentioned these verses. You quoted them. So read Surah 112, Surat al-Ikhlas, Ayah 4. No, is there to him any equivalent? Okay, now... Why were you quoting these verses? What were you trying to prove? I quoted uh, verses from, from the Bible, not from the Quran. Th those two verses you quoted from the Quran in the comment section. Why did you quote them? I didn't. If you even go in the chat, go in the chat. Okay, hold on. I mentioned Let me show it to you. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. 18, 18. Yeah, I know you, but you mentioned these two verses as well. Why? I didn't. If I, I mentioned, go to, 18, 18. you mentioned these two verses as well. Why? I didn't. Okay, when I read your comment, on uh, hold on, let me read your comment. And if you did, what are you going to tell me? If I show you that you did. 
Remember you get oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because you did. Here you go. Let's go. Let me find it. Here you go. 42 of them. You know what, my friend? Can I kiss your head? Do you know why I want to kiss your head? Why? Because you were quoting Isaiah 42 11. Allahu Akbar, brother. You got me in a mistake, man. I love you, baby. Guys, I have to concede. I will make mistakes. I have to concede. The man didn't quote Quran 42 11. He quoted Isaiah 42 11 to prove Muhammad. He defeated the Kafir. You defeated the Kufar. Okay. Now I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to show me that Muhammad. Muhammad is prophesied in the Bible. You sure? Yes. You positive? If you go on. No, hold on. I'm, before I'm you go, I know, I know what you're going to say. You positive you want to use Deuteronomy 18 because I'm going to warn you before you do. You positive. Wait. Deuteronomy 18, yeah. 18. Stick with yeah. one at a time. Don't get nervous. Breathe. We're not going to be okay. jumping all over. You mentioned Deuteronomy 18, 18, right? Yes. Okay. You positive you want to use the book of Deuteronomy because I'm going to use Deuteronomy to prove that Muhammad is the son of the devil. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Okay, go to Deuteronomy 14, verse 1. You have your Bible? Yeah. Okay, open up to Deuteronomy 14, verse 1. Now, you use Deuteronomy 18 to prove Muhammad. Good. Go to Deuteronomy 14, verse 1. Yes, I'm Read it for me. I'm here. Read it. Read it. You are the children of the Lord, your God. Do not cut yourselves or share the front of your heads for the, de for the dead. Okay, Israel is what? Israel's called what? You just read it. it Lord, you, you, you are the children of the Lord, your God. So they're the children of the Lord God, right? Yes. Okay, now go to Deuteronomy 32, verse 6. Deuteronomy 32, verse 6. Yes, I'm here now. It says... Is this the way you repay the Lord, you, you foolish and unwise people? Is he not your father and creator who made you and formed you? So he is their father who made them, right? Yeah. Okay, now read Deuteronomy 32, 18 to 20. Eighteen twenty. 20. You deserted... You deserted to the rock who fathered you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. The Lord saw this and rejected them. Because okay, one be slowly, slowly. Mustafa, Muhammad Sharif, Mustafa, slowly. Read Deuteronomy 30, 32, 18, slowly. Don't rush. It's like you're rushing. Slowly. Read Deuteronomy 32, Sorry. 18, slowly again. Sorry. You deserted the rock who fathered you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. Okay, now, before you even move on, God who fathered them, who gave them birth, begot them, they are the sons of God. Go to Surat Al-Maidah, chapter 5 of the Quran, verse 18. Surat Al-Maidah, chapter 5, verse 18. Okay. Read it for me. But the Jews and the children say, we are the children of Allah and his beloved. Say and why do you, does he punish you for your sins? Probably you are human beings from among those he has created. He forgives whom he wills and he punishes whom he wills. And to Allah belongs the, the Speak dominion louder of the heavens and, and slowly. the earth. And what, okay, when and you what read, is between them. Okay, Mustafa, when you read, you need to yeah. read louder, mm -hmm. not just for yourself, so people can hear you. And slowly, it's not just you you're reading for. One more time, slowly. Sorry about that. But the Jews and the Christians say, we are the children of Allah and his beloved. Say, then why does he punish you for your sins? Rather, you are human beings from among those he has, he has created. He, uh, he forgives whom he wills and he punishes whom he wills. And to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them. Okay. Him is the final destination. Okay. The, the Deuteronomy that you quoted states... God is a father to Israel. He gave birth to them spiritually, not physically, not sexually. They are his sons and daughters. But your God, Allah, told the Jews, you are not my sons and the Christians are not my sons. 
then how can Muhammad be like Moses when he contradicts what Moses said about God being a father? Is Allah your father? No, no, no. So Say it again. Say it again. Is no. Allah your father? No. And you said stuck for Allah, right? Yeah. You just proved that Deuteronomy proves that your prophet is the devil because the God of Moses is a father to Israel. When I said, is Allah your father? Is stuck for Allah? No. So why are you quoting Deuteronomy, which destroys your Quran and deletes your Quran? Because I believe that not all of Deuteronomy was changed. Yet I don't Muslim care was. what you believe. You quoted it, right? You don't choose the parts you like. You're not God. You're not a prophet. I don't care what you believe. You quoted Deuteronomy. You're stuck with it. Now go to Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, read 230. And when your Lord says the angels indeed... No, I chapter 2, not chapter... Uh, Mustafa, Sorry. pay attention, my friend. I know you're yes. a little nervous. Calm down. I didn't say Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 30. I said chapter 2, verse 230, 230. And if he has divorced her, then she is not lawful to him. Afterward, until she marries a husband other than him, and if the latter husband divorces her or dies, there is no blame on the woman and her former husband for returning to each other. If they think that they can keep within the limits of Allah, oh, one, one second, Mustafa, Allah, which he makes one second, uh, flying, uh, one second, flying Rajlin, are you telling me what to do on my YouTube channel? Hold on, Mustafa, one second, sorry. Flying Rajalan, are you okay. telling me what to do on my YouTube channel? I just want to know answer so I can know what to do with you. Flying Rajalan level three, are you telling me what to do on my channel? You're telling me how to run my channel and deal with Muslims? Are you telling me what to do? Prophet, send her back to the doghouse. Get her out of here. Bye-bye, Flying. Shut your mouth and get out of here. Okay, send her out of here. Now, sorry about that, Mustafa. I apologize because you got demons who want to distract you and me from talking. Okay, slowly, you, I want you to slowly focus with me and follow the conversation because I know you have notes because I can hear you flipping through pages. Did you hear what chapter 2, verse 230, 230 says in your Quran? Yes. It says, when a man, yes. you divorce a woman and she... <clears throat> Wants to return to you, or you want to return to her to you, you want to return to her, you can't until she marries someone else and that someone else divorces her, right? Yes. And that person, if I divorce a woman and I'm a Muslim and she marries someone and he divorces her, that person made her halal for me, lawful for me. He's known as muhallil, right? Yeah. Okay, I want everyone to understand because a lot of people don't understand the Quran. In chapter 2, verse 230, it says, If a man divorces a woman, he cannot take her back unless she marries someone, and that someone either dies or divorces her. Okay? Now, go to Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 okay. of 4. Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 of 4. Twenty-four. What? Verses one of four. M now remember, slowly and loud. Read slowly and loud. If a, if a man marries a woman who becomes displeasing to him because he finds something slowly. indecent about her, slowly, and he writes her a certificate, a certificate of divorce, gives it to her and sends her from his house. And if after she leaves his house and becomes the wife of another man and her second husband dislikes her and writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her and sends her from his house, or if he dies, then her husband who, who divorced her is not allowed to marry again and she has been defiled, that would be detestable in the eyes of the Lord. Do okay. not bring sin upon the land the Lord your God is giving you. Yeah, you keep reading too fast. For some reason, I don't know why I have to repeat myself slowly, but that's okay. You got it. Deuteronomy 24, verse 1 of 4 says, if a man divorces a woman and she, she remarries, okay? 
Stop flipping the pages. I know you got notes from your websites. Listen. Deuteronomy 24, if a man divorces a woman and she remarries and that second husband divorces her or dies, the first man cannot take her back. That's disgusting, detestable to God. So let me ask you a question. Why did your prophet and his God command something that the God of Moses says is disgusting and despicable and detestable? Well, it's like it's two different it's two different books, the Quran and the But you quoted Deuteronomy. Like they're not going to agree on the same things. No, but you Even quoted Deuteronomy. Mustafa, you're not getting it. You quoted Deuteronomy to prove Muhammad is prophesied. That is very, Deuteronomy says Muhammad's teaching is disgusting, detestable to the true God of Moses, and Muhammad is disgusting, and the true God of Moses would damn him to hell. So why'd you quote Deuteronomy? It's, it's like I said before. Not all of the autonomy was exchanged. Oh, no, I'm it. sorry. That doesn't work, Mustafa. You don't decide which parts of Deuteronomy you like and which you reject. You quote it, you're stuck with it. So stop quoting Deuteronomy because we're going to delete your Quran and bury Muhammad when you do. So now let's go to Isaiah. Are you ready for Isaiah? Yeah. Okay, go to Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7. Okay, that's it. Isaiah 9. Because you quoted, I just want everyone to know, before you read, pay attention. He quoted Isaiah 42, verse 11, and Isaiah 29, 12. He quoted them. So he's quoting Isaiah to prove Muhammad. Okay, Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and he will, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace. There will be no end. He will reign all on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from the time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Okay, now read again. I'm going to read it for you. Isaiah 9, 6, it says, A child is born. The Hebrew is Yelid Yulad. Yelid Yulad. Does that sound familiar? Lam yelid wa lam yulad? Yes, it, it sounds like Arabic. Okay. Yeah. It says, a child born, yelid yulad, and that child born, that human baby, his name is Mighty God. In Hebrew, Mighty God is El Gibor. In Arabic, it would be Ilah El Jabbar. Ilah El Jabbar. So a child born, and his name is the Mighty God. Now go to Isaiah 10, the next chapter, Isaiah 10, 20 to 21. I say 10. So what's this? Chapter 10, verses 20 to 21. Now, again, I this I keep repeating myself. Don't read too fast and read loud. Okay. In that day, the remnants of Israel, the survivors of Jacob, will no longer will no longer rely on him who will struck them down, but who will truly rely on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, a remnant. A remnant will return. A remnant of Jacob will return to the Almighty, to the Mighty God. To the Mighty God. So Sorry, the Lord, the Lord Yahovah, is the Mighty God. He is the Mighty God. But in Isaiah nine, the child born is the Mighty God. So now Isaiah says, the Mighty God, the Mighty God, El Gibor, Ila El Jabbar, will be born as a human baby. Do you agree? That's what the verse is. Do you accept it though? I don't have to know. So why would you quote the prophet Isaiah, whose theology destroys the Quran, and says Muhammad is a liar when Muhammad said, Lam yelid wa lam yulad, because Isaiah says, the mighty God of Israel, the mighty God, will be born as a child, proving Muhammad is a liar. So why did you quote him? Because like you're not focusing on actual verse. The actual verse. No, you don't take the, the verse you like. You don't take verses you like and try to prove your theology. I'm sorry. You can do that with your filthy Quran. You can't do it with my book. Isaiah 42 is written in a book that has 66 chapters. And Isaiah 42 isn't the only chapter. You got to read Isaiah 1 all the way to 41 to see what Isaiah teaches. I'm sorry. We don't play that game here. Now go to Isaiah 63 verse 16. Isaiah 63 verse 16.
Isaiah 63, verse 16. Yet you are our father, though Abraham does not know us or Israel, acknowledge us. You, Lord, are our father, our redeemer from all old is your name. Okay, again, like Moses, the true prophet of God, notice two true prophets, Moses and Isaiah, true prophets agree. God is their spiritual father. They are his children spiritually, not sexually, physically. Is Allah your father? No. Is he the father of Muhammad? No. Is this are the Muslims the sons of Allah? No. Okay, read Isaiah 64, verse 8. Yet yeah, you, Lord, are, are our father, and we are the clay, you are the potter. You are all the work of your hand. Okay. Again, a true prophet, Isaiah, like the true prophet Moses, they both agree God is our spiritual father. We are his spiritual children. Not physically, sexually, because God is not a physical being who has sex. He's our spiritual father who spiritually produced us. Is Allah your spiritual father? No. Is Muhammad the spiritual son of Allah? No. So do you agree? Do you agree? Isaiah 9, 6 to 7, and Isaiah 63, 16, Isaiah 64, 8, contradict the Quran and contradict Muhammad. Yeah. Say it, I'm, I'm say it again. again. No, hold on. Before you go, we're going to go to Isaiah 42. Like I'm going to use Isaiah 42 to destroy Muhammad. I promise you. Isaiah 42, I'm going to bury Muhammad by the power of Jesus Christ. But first, I want everyone to hear you. You admit Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7, Isaiah 63, verse 16, and Isaiah 64, verse 8, contradict the Quran and contradict Muhammad, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Now go to Isaiah 42, 11. Now let's see. how I'm going to use Isaiah 42 now to destroy and delete the Quran. Your words. Okay. Isaiah 42, 11. Okay. Read it for me. Let the wilderness and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kedar lives rejoice. Mm -hmm. Let the people of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the mountains up. And you're assuming that because it says the mm -hmm. settlements of Kedar, that means Muhammad? Well, there's two reasons I believe. So with Kedar, according to my research in the book of Isaiah, it refers to Arabia. And at the time of Isaiah, Arabia, that like wasn't Saudi Arabia, there wasn't all these different countries, it was one big country called Arabia, yeah. and then also Sela, because it says, Let the people of Sela sing for joy, let them shout from the mountaintops. Sela is a mountain in Medina, and okay. Medina is the, is the city of the prophets. You are aware, you're aware, so that's why I, you, know, you are aware there are many places that have the same name, for example, you have Basra in Syria and Basra in Iraq. So, I'm gonna now ask you, prove to me Muhammad is a descendant of Kedar. I can't. Say it again. I can't. How can I prove that? Well, Isaiah okay. Because Kedar is supposedly the father of the Arabs, and he's the son of Ishmael, right? Wait, is he? Sorry. I okay, don't know well, I don't know. Then, then you don't is even know the, how to use this argument. Okay. All right. Now, here's do me a favor. You, you obviously don't know what you're talking about because yeah. you don't know how to use the argument. You start at 11, right? Yeah. Okay. Start at verse 1. Read verse 1 to 10 slowly. Sorry, um, chapter 42, verse 1 to 10. Isaiah 42, verse 1, all the way to 10, because you read at 11. But slowly, and don't read fast. I'm going to stop you if you read fast. Okay, sorry. It says, here is, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one. And just note that the word chosen one in Arabic is Mustafa. Mustafa yeah, and just Mustafa. note that it's not Arabic. This is Hebrew. And the chosen one is used for Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. So let's not play your games because I'm going to embarrass you in a minute. Keep reading. Okay. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or Slowly. raise his voice in the streets. Slowly. 
a bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. Hmm. In, his, in his law, the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says. He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, will have, will call, will, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be to be a covenant for the people and a light for the um light for the genitals to open eyes that are blind to free captives from prison and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness i am the lord that is my name i will not give my glory to another or my or my praise to idols see the former things have taken place and new things i declare before they spring into being i announce them to you sing to the lord a new song is Praise from all the ends of the earth. You who okay, now before you move on, slow down. Slow the, down. You, the ends of the earth. So listen to what I'm saying. You, the ends of the earth. So Isaiah is calling all the people of the world to praise God, right? Yes. Okay, read it again. Sing what? Sing a new song. Keep reading. Sing to the Lord. His praise from the end of the earth. The end of you the earth. Go down to the sea. See? Keep going. If you who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you island and all who live in them. So why did you focus only on Arabia when the context is talking about all the peoples all over the world, not just Arabia? Why did you just focus on Arabia? Because of this, could because of this. No, because of this, this 10, this 10. Why don't you start at 10? Who are the islands? Who are those who go down to the sea? And at the ends of the earth, only Arabia? No. So one more time. Since verse 10 tells you the ends of the earth, those who go down to the sea, the islands and their inhabitants, and it's referring to the whole world, why did you go to verse 11 and fo focus just on Arabia and ignore that verse 10 is talking about all peoples all over the world must turn to God and worship him? Because verse 10 talks about the whole world, but then verse 11 is more specific. No, it's not. It's talking about everyone all over the world. Even in verse 10, it's specific. The coastlands, those who go down to the sea. Now read 12. Now start at 12. Start at 12 and keep reading, and I'll tell you when to stop. Start at 12 now. Let them give glory to the Lord and proclaim his praise in the islands. The Lord is the islands Arabia? Like mighty one. Is the island Arabia? No. Okay, keep reading. No. Keep reading. The Lord will march out like a mighty man, like a warrior. He will stir up his deal. With a shout, he will raise the battle cry and will triumph over his enemies. For a long time I have kept silence. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp, I pant. I will I will lie awake in the mountains and hills and dry up all the vegetation, all the vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Uh, along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and will make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. But those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are our gods, will be turned back in utter shame. Hear, you deaf, look, you blind, and see. Who is blind but my servant, and deaf, like the message I send? Who is the, who is blind, like the one who committed to me? Blind like the servant of the Lord. You have seen many things, but have paid no attention. Your ears open, but you hear nothing. The pleases the Lord for the sake of his righteousness, to make his law great and glorious. For this is a people plundered and looted. All of them trapped in pits or hidden away in prisons. They have become plundered with no one to rescue them. They have been made. Who is he talking about now? No say, Send them back. Who are these people conquered and no one to rescue them? And God is not going to come out and fight. Even though they've sinned, he's going to have mercy and redeem them. Who is he talking about? The world, presumably. Say it again. I presume the world. Okay, so let's be honest. You've only read verse 11, and you never bothered to read the entire chapter to understand it, correct? Correct. Say it again. 
but they're not. No, hold on, no, no, don't change it. Just answer the question directly. Up until this time, yeah. you only read verse 11, right? You never bothered to read the entire chapter, right? Not the entire chapter, but parts of it. Okay, part of it. And so when we quote your Quran out of context, do you like that? When we take one verse out of context or you get upset? I get upset. So why should we respect you and respect your prophet when you do that to our Bible? Why do you want me to respect your prophet and your deen and not be disgusted with Muhammad and the kind of people he produces when you do that to my Bible, but you'll get upset if I do that with your Quran? I don't make the Bible look disgusting. No, actually, you do because you took it out of context, and yet your prophet makes the Quran disgusting because of things he says we could talk about. Yes, you do when you take verses out of context. You just admit you're recorded now. I said... <clears throat> You've only read verse 11, right? You haven't read the entire chapter, correct? You go, correct. You just admit you never bothered reading the entire chapter. You only read those snippets because you picked it up from websites or Muslim debaters telling you to read verse 11, but never bothering to read the entire chapter. Now, go back to Isaiah 42 one more time. I want you to read 6 and 7. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand, I will keep you, and will make you to be a convenience for the people and a light for the genitals, to, op to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. Now I want you to pay attention what he says to the servant. I will make you a covenant to the people, and you'll be what for the Gentiles? A light for the Gentiles, right? Yeah. Okay, so pay attention. I'm going to make you a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, right? Yeah. Okay. Now go to Isaiah 49. Read for me Isaiah 49, 6 and 8. Isaiah 49, verse 6 and verse 8. Um, six to eight. Just read verse 6 of Isaiah 49 and then read verse 8 for me. But you can read all the way, even 7. But read it slowly. He says, it is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make a light for the Gentiles that my salvation may reach to the end of earth. This is what my Lord says, the Redeemer of Holy One of Israel, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of Judah. Kings will see you and stand up. Princes will see and bow down. Because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen me. This is what the Lord says. In the time of my favor, I will answer you. And the days of salvation, I will help you. I will keep you. You and you and will make you to be con to be a confidence for the people to restore the land. And to and to reassign its just an inheritance. Okay, pay attention. In verse 6 it says, my servant. So that's Isaiah 42, my servant, right? Yeah. Okay, and then it says, like in Isaiah 42, that you, my servant, will be a light to the Gentiles, bringing my salvation to the ends of the earth. And like in Isaiah 42, he says, I'll make you a covenant for the people, right? So Isaiah 49, Isaiah 42, he's talking about the same servant who will be a light to the Gentiles and a covenant for the people, right? Yes. And you said that's Muhammad, right? I said the verse 11 was Muhammad. Yeah, but verse 11 is about the servant. Behold my servant, which you said, oh, see, no, it's chosen, says Mustafa in Arabic, right? Yeah. So it's about, according to you, the servant is Muhammad, right? Yeah. Okay, now read Isaiah 49, verse 3. Isaiah 49, verse 3. In. By the way, my phone, it's on end. Okay, hold on. We'll read Isaiah 49, verse 3 real quickly before you end. You're going to charge it. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. Wait, wait. His servant's name is what? Israel. You are my servant, Israel. They say, you are my servant, Muhammad. You are my servant, Ismail. You're my servant, Arab. Or you're my servant, Israel. Israel. Okay, can you show me where Muhammad is called Israel? God's servant? He isn't actually... So why would you quote Isaiah 42 
ignore the entire chapter, then ignore Isaiah, Isaiah 49, which is speaking of the same servant, ignore that chapter, then ignore Isaiah 53, which is again about the servant, all of which tells you the servant, his name is Israel, not Ismail, not Kedar, not O Arab, not Muhammad. Why did you ignore all that? This doesn't change the fact that page 11 clearly refers to a place in Arabia. Okay, it doesn't matter because the servant is the savior of the whole world. He's the savior of the Arabs, the Russians, <clears throat> the Turks. That's the point. He saves everybody. It does matter because the servant is Israel who saves all the nations, including the Arabs, not just the Arabs. Okay, but like you, you still haven't talked about Kedar and, and Salah. Why would I need to? I just explained to you. Do you did you read when it says my servant, a light to the Gentiles? Does the Gentiles include all the Arabs? Yeah. Only the Arabs? Not only the Arabs. Okay, okay, so you just refuted yourself and you buried yourself and you buried Muhammad. Because this servant will save Arabs, but not just Arabs. He saves the ends of the earth. But the servant is Israel. You want to read it again? Isaiah 49.3? No, I understand, I understand. Okay, so you got it now. So Isaiah says, God yeah. is a father to Israel. Isaiah says, the mighty God will be born as a child, a human baby. Isaiah says, the servant is Israel who saves the world, including Arabs. And you still want to use Isaiah to prove Muhammad. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Now, is your phone going to die or you need to charge it? No, because I'm, I'm actually in the house. I'm actually at my house at the moment. So it's not going to die? No, it, it will. No, it will die. Oh, when? We'll talk inshallah until. Okay. Does. Okay, because I want to go to Isaiah 29. I don't want to talk and then your phone dies. You have time for Isaiah 29? I don't know. Okay. What, you want to come back later and we'll talk about it? Uh, maybe tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay, but that's one thing I want you to do, Mustafa. Stop attacking and mocking in the comment section. Be nice, we'll be nice to you. The reason why I'm being tough with you is because you kept complaining, you kept attacking, you kept mocking, you kept insulting in the comment section with David Wood. Stop that if you want people to respect you. Stop. Sorry. Sorry, sorry I didn't actually do that. I, um, I actually went live with you a few months ago. I don't know if you remember I'm oh, even, are you, hold on, but aren't you Mustafa? Aren't you Sorry. Mustafa? No, I'm Muhammad Shri. But didn't you say that you're gonna we're gonna delete our, our channel because of what you said in the comment section? Because uh, um, then David, what he said about a challenge a few months ago, he oh, said that see. anyone could tell me where Muhammad is mentioned. In okay, Bible, I see, I I'll see. Delete my channel. I see. Okay, well, my apologies, Muhammad. I thought you're that young man, Mustafa. That's why I kept calling you Mustafa. My apologies. I thought you're Mustafa because Mustafa was attacking us in the comment section and mocking and keeps saying he's going to embarrass us. And that's why I thought you were him. My apologies to you. But one thing, that's fine. As long as you're respectful, I'll be respectful to you. So I thought you were that man mocking. But my hat's to you. None of these passages prove Muhammad. None of them do. Don't twist them. Take them out of context. Read them in context. Next time when a Muslim tells you Isaiah 42, 11, what you do is read the entire chapter. Next time Muslim tells you Isaiah 29, what you do is read the entire chapter. Now go to Isaiah 29. If you have time, few minutes. Inshallah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, we all you thought you're Mustafa. That's what we thought. Like you could even go back on the meeting that I had with you and David. Wood yeah, yeah. Remember, there's a lot of people that contact me. I actually thought you were Mustafa, but I appreciate you that you came with us and with me and David Wood and you're back on again. Again, mistaken identity. My apologies to you, but still, it was still helpful and beneficial because you still learn. And again, I was assuming you're him who's harsh, but Lord have mercy on us. Go now to Isaiah 29, 12. Read for me. Okay. If it says, or if the scroll is someone who cannot read and say, read this, please, they will answer, I do not know how to read. Okay, now you're... The reason you're, why I think it's Muhammad. Because Muhammad, when he said he didn't know how to read, when Gabriel came to him, right? Yeah. Okay, so this verse... You're saying it's about Muhammad because when Gabriel said to him, came to him and said, read, he says, I don't know how to read. So this is about Muhammad, right? Yes. What about verse 11? In chapter 96 of the Quran. Okay, but read verse 11 for me. Isaiah 29, says, 11. Read it for me. For you, this whole vision. 
for you, this whole vision is nothing but words sealed in a scroll. And if you give the scroll to someone who can read and say, read this piece, they will answer, I can't, it is sealed. Okay, now, why did you read 12 but ignore verse 11, which is the context? Had you ever read verse 11 before this meeting? No. Okay. And say it again. You never read verse 11 before this meeting, right? Yeah. Okay. Like, no, sorry. Okay, so again, you took one verse and didn't bother to read the verses before and after. So now, now let's follow your logic. Be consistent. You're saying Isaiah 29, 12, because it says you give this book to a man and he'll say, I cannot read. That's what Muhammad, right? Yeah. But in verse 11, it says a book will be given to a man who can read, but it's sealed and he'll say, I can't read it. So are you saying two prophets will come? One who can read, but because the book is sealed, he can't read it. Another who can't read. So who's the other prophet then? Who is the prophet who will be given a book that's sealed and will say, look, I want to read it, but it's sealed and I can't. What's his name? I, I don't know. Say it again. I don't know. But you know, verse 12, it's Muhammad, but you don't know who it is in verse 11. Because verse 12 is not yeah. a prophecy about a prophet. If you read the chapter, God is rebuking what? Israel, punishing Israel, and saying, my people Israel are like an unlettered, uneducated, illiterate buffoon who's not able to read, and they're like a man who wants to read, but the book is sealed from him. He's making fun of Israel and liking them to a man who's uneducated, illiterate, because he can't understand the revelation, and to another person who, though is able to read, he can't read the book because it's sealed from him, because God has sealed it as part of his judgment upon his people, and you're assuming it's a prophet. Now read verse 13, Isaiah 29, 13. Okay. <clears throat> the Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. Okay. Did you now understand the context? Verse 11 and 13, it's talking about his people who are rebellious, who are evil who oppose God and God is now fed up with them about to punish them? Yeah. Now read verse 11 one more time for the context so you can get it. For you, this whole vision is nothing but web scroll. See, scroll for scroll. you, who's the you? you? Give the scroll. Hold on, before you go, Muhammad. For you, who's the you? Who's he talking to? Israel. So he's saying, for you, Israel, this vision is what? Read it. It's nothing but words. It's nothing but words sealed in a scroll. See, he's saying for you, these words of the prophet are nothing like, but a book seal that you can't read, or even if you could read it, you're too illiterate and stupid to understand it. And you're saying it's Muhammad. See, if I do that with the Quran, you'd be upset with me, and rightfully so. That's why no Muslim in the planet can prove that David Wood or I ever deliberately misread the Quran, take it out of context. We're always careful by the grace of Jesus to read in context, but the Muslims are always butchering my Bible. And yet they say Allah is the truth and they're commanded to be truthful. And we're the ones who are perverts for corrupting the word, but we're more honest and truthful than the Muslims. And we have more respect. For you Muslims, because we quote your Quran in context, because our God is the God of truth. He's the true God, Jesus Christ, and tells us to always speak truth, even when it comes to another religion. But you guys can't do that for my religion. No. You can't do that for my Bible. No. Can, can I say something first? To start with, not all Christians are like that. Not all Christians boast in context. Which Christians don't? In, in where I live, where I live in the in the UK, there's um, there's a a far right racist, like racist group, and you and consider them Christian? They always misquote. Okay, my friend. Yes, they, they, I don't call Muhammad. Yes. Listen to me carefully. You're calling okay. terrorist, right wing terrorist groups Christian, 
It's like if I tell you ISIS are Muslims, you'll say, no, they're not, right? right. Okay, so like, why are you... That's like truth is. Why are you... Give me the example of fanatics who are Bible pervets. I'm talking about the sincere Christians who truly want to follow the Bible and honor Jesus Christ. Those men, they do their best to try to represent what another religion teaches they make may they may make mistakes they're not perfect but with your scholars and apologists to a t zakir naik ahmad idad muhammad hijab ali drama <clears throat> adnan rashid i'm talking about those who claim to be true muslims not terrorists and sincere seekers of truth every one of them perverts the bible they don't quote in context now show me where i have deliberately Perverted the Quran, where David Wood has, where Osama Dakdok has, where Christian Prince has, where Samuel Green has. Show us. You can't. Because our God is a God of truth and he demands us to be as honest and accurate as possible. We'll make mistakes, but it's not deliberate. But how come Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawa, Adnan Rashid, Zakir Naik, the late Ahmed Idad, <clears throat> Ijaz Ahmed, Shivrali, none of them can be honest and accurately quote my, my scriptures and context or use sources consistently. Why? David Wood, he uploaded a video a few years ago. It's about, it, it was about jihad. And, then by, and I can tell by this, but he completely misunderstood jihad in Islam. Prove it. Definition. Prove it. Sorry? Prove it. You can make an assertion. I know Muslims say we're lying, but that's the thing. Prove it. Show us where we're wrong. David Wood, it was in his video. Prove it. Four stages of jihad. Yeah, prove he's wrong. It's in the video. I know you're not listening. Prove what he said in the video is wrong. Give me the facts. Show me. I'll have to rewatch the video, but I'll please. Contact you when I okay, come it. back, call me when you rewatch the video because you're not Mustafa. I thought you're this Mustafa who likes to attack and mock and blaspheme. We'll have another discussion. Prove to me what he said in the video is wrong, and I guarantee you he's absolutely right because I know David, he quotes accurately and never misquotes. And I'll prove it to you. Go watch the video, contact me by the grace of God. Now that I know it's you, we'll go live again, and I guarantee you he didn't misquote. You want him to be wrong because the facts hurt. I understand. But that's why you got to be open to the truth and ask God, God, who are you? If Jesus is your son, show me. I'll accept it. And if Muhammad is a prophet, show me. But stop telling God what he can and cannot be. So go watch the video. Okay. Get me the facts and we'll talk about it, right? Also soon. And... Ever since our last discussion, I, I was like, um, I had to read the, the Bible a little bit. It's like, um, I was not along with some of the stuff it said, but then there's all the stuff that said that I do have a problem with. For example, I found 30 places in the Bible, 30 pairs, which, where, where, the, where the Bible contradicts itself. And if I show I you found, 100 places where your Quran contradicts itself, are you going to bury and delete and flush the Quran? No. Wait, 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 wait. You see, again, you're now you're being a liar and inconsistent. If I show you at least 100 places where your Quran contradicts itself, are you going to bury it, delete it, and say Muhammad is a liar? No, because... Like, no, wait, no, because just, what? Just, just, like, so. No, because then, what? I'll, like, I'll do... Because I will I will research the verses. I, I'll find... Oh, but the, you won't research... The, you won't research the Christian websites that have answered these Bible contradictions. Have, See? You're dishonest. Just, I have, I have. Okay, give me, name me one website. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to prove you're a liar. I'm going to prove you're lying. Give me the name of the website, the Christian website that answers these Bible contradictions. Give me the name of it. I've looked, I've searched up these contradictions. Give me the name of one of the sites that you looked for. So the contradictions? Where the, the Christian website refuting your alleged Bible contradictions. Is. No, you're lying. I'm, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you two to off the top of my head, and you're lying. Tectonics.org, tectonics.org.org, 
and Christian Think Tank Nightcom. See, I caught you in a lie. That's two of many websites that are devoted to refuting these so-called Bible errors. How many books have you read by Christians refuting these Bible contradictions? Name me one. I haven't found any. So then you're a liar. I haven't found any. You are a wicked liar, a son of the devil. See, now I, I can say you're a liar. Do you know why? When it comes to your filthy book, Sorry. if I show you contradictions, you'll try to find answers. But when it comes to my Bible, someone says there are contradictions and you're okay with it and you accept it. But do you know that means your prophet no, is the son of the devil? Because your prophet said the Bible is not corrupt. Okay, wait, wait. You're not listening. I want you to come back because I'm going to quote your prophet saying my Bible is not corrupt. So when you prove their contradictions, you're going to give us more proof to hate Muhammad and say he's a bastard of the devil. Because he said the Bible's never been changed. Is he wrong? Is he wrong? When did he say that? All throughout your Quran. Do you have time? Go charge your phone. Come back. I'm going to show you from your Quran and Hadith. Muhammad said, the Bible's never been changed. It's pure, preserved. But you just said Muhammad is a liar. He is a tool of the devil because you're saying, saying the Bible has been changed. Get your phone charged. I'll come back later. And I'm going to show you what your Quran and your fake prophet said. So thank you for proving Muhammad is a liar because you're smarter than Muhammad because you proved the Bible's corrupt. So why are you a Muslim? Can you, sh can you show me like tomorrow or next time? We're yes, with tomorrow with in the daytime, contact me, get your Quran ready because I'm going to go through the Quran and show you your prophet said the Bible that you said is full of contradictions. The uncorrupt pure words of God never been changed, but you just said he's a liar. So get ready for tomorrow, right? Okay, okay be ready and I'll contact you tomorrow. You, okay, buddy, take care. See? This is how you have to treat these young men, and they respect you more and love you more for it. You effeminate, wishy-washy, sissified Christians who think you're humble and spiritual, your approach sucks. It doesn't work. You notice he doesn't want to go. He wants to come back. You notice he wants to talk to me, though I'm tough with him, and I'm harsh, and I go for the juggler, because they love that. They respect that. They respect boldness and think that if you're bold, then you must have the truth and you're not ashamed of what you believe. But you sissified evangelifishes, your sissified approach sucks. It doesn't work. Keep it. Get out of here. We don't want that approach. By the way, Lord Jesus willing, I'm going to be live with Al Fadi today at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to be live with Al Fadi, Lord Jesus willing, on Sira International. C I R A. Lord willing, tomorrow around this same time, don't forget, schedule it. Tomorrow around this same time, God willing, I'll be calling this young man, and he's going to see that his own prophet prove the Bible is the uncorrupt word of God. God willing, see you later. Christ is risen, risen indeed.